Hi, this is Dr. Candace Silvola from Rustic Ranch Remedies. In today's video, I want to show how you can make a hydrosol at home with simple kitchen equipment. And I'm going to make a apple hydrosol. So I have a cutting board, a knife. You're going to need whatever herb or uh, produce or anything that you're going to use for your um, hydrosol. You're also going to need a a big pot. What we're going to do is place the apples on the bottom here and then we're going to use steam distillation. So there's going to be water on top of the apples and we're going to put it over heat. The water is going to evaporate and we're going to collect the evaporation. So that's how we're going to steam distill the apples to make a apple hydrosol. So I'll walk you through the entire process. So I've already disinfected um, everything, um, all my equipment and everything, so everything's nice and clean. We wanna make sure that we're keeping things very sanitary. Uh, we don't want to contaminate our hydrosol. So I'm gonna start off with just uh, cutting my apples. I've already washed all this and it's all ready to go. I'm using my Kyocera knife. I really enjoy this brand of knives. They're ceramic. I've been using them for about 10 years and they're super lightweight, very sharp. So I'm going just to cut up my apples into chunks and I'm gonna place my apples in the pot. Steam distillation of herbs or produce like this is going to capture in the hydrosol, in the hydrosol water, all the water constituents of the plant material. So it's gonna, it's gonna collect the um, aromatic uh, properties of the plant material and also a lot of the phytochemicals and anything in the plant material that's water soluble. Unlike essential oils where you're, where it's collected the um, volatile aromatic oil constituents of, of the oil, of the plant material. So I have my, my plant material on the bottom. In this case, it's apples. You're gonna cover the plant material with the best water that you have. In this case, I have water that comes out of my Berkey filter. And I'm going to place enough here to make sure that the apples are covered. So that was about four cups of water that I've used there. And then on top of that, you can use a steamer basket you can use a uh, large flat stone on the bottom here in, um, in the bottom in the center. You can place a bowl that's upside down that is safe to be heated up um, under vigorous conditions and not break. Uh, you want something sturdy that's on the bottom. You just want it to be out of the water. So um, I decided to use this uh, steamer basket and it almost fits there. It's, I really want it flush here so we're not having um, the steam to escape. So I'm going to adjust this to make sure it fits correctly. So I fixed the gap just by placing some foil around the edge there. I'm going to place this whole thing on top of a hot plate and I'm going to turn it on high. Get the water going nice and warm. So in order to collect the steam, I am going to place this glass um, Pyrex measuring cup in here. It's nice and wide, so it has a large um, area in order to collect the steam. And then in order to catch the steam, we're going to place the lid upside down. So the steam is going to rise and collect on the inside of this lid and because it's inverted it's going to drip 
right down into the measuring cup in here and that's going to collect all the steam, all the water from um, the apples down here. And this whole process is going to take um, anywhere between one to two hours. So in order to um, aid in the process of the condensation then of the water that goes on the lid, I'm gonna be placing a large block of ice and you're gonna want a lot of ice for this. So all in all, this is really basic equipment that everyone should have in their house, in their kitchens. There's a hot plate on top of the stove, a pot, um, either a steamer basket or steamer basket of some sort, or a um, bowl or a stone that's sitting in the bottom of uh, the plant material here. Then your um, collecting vessel on top of that and make sure everything is safe to be heated and boiled. You wanna avoid anything from cracking or breaking during this process. And then you just need um, lid and ice. So very basic equipment. So as this is heating up, I'm gonna go get the ice prepared. So we have a little bit of steam going on and I see some condensation on the lid here. So I'm going to turn the heat down to about medium just to continue the um, boiling process, but not so it's so hot. I have a huge chunk of ice here. And what you do is just sit it on the top. So you're gonna want the ice to help with the condensation of the steam on top. It's just gonna make it um, the process faster with it um, dropping into your collection vessel. Um, you want your ice to be in a bag of some sort, a Ziploc bag, so that way um, it doesn't make a mess because this ice is going to melt and if it's not in a, con a contained um, bag like this, it's just gonna get everywhere and make a huge mess. Um, you can use ice cubes if you want. I just uh, filled up this Ziploc with um, a water and just place that in the freezer. So it's a, just a big chunk of ice and I have a few of these. They're ready to go still in the freezer. I'm gonna replace the ice when this is melted almost all the way down. It's been about an hour. I ended up pouring some of the melted water out of the bag about halfway through and there's only a little bit of ice left in here. So I'm gonna switch my ice bags and while I'm doing that, I'm going to show you what is going on in here. You can see that there's uh, it's dripping right here from the center of the lid right down into the collecting vessel, which I have a Pyrex measuring cup there. We can see that the water is boiling. And the apples are below that um, strainer there the steamer basket. It looks like there's about a half cup of um, hydrosol in there. So I'm gonna let this go for about another hour. I'm gonna place my fresh block of ice on top. And it turned out that the best setting for this to be on was about medium high. I wanna keep a low boil. It smells so good in here. It smells like I'm baking an apple pie. So I'm gonna let this continue going and be back in about an hour for a checkup. It's been about two hours now and the second bag of ice is pretty much all water. I am going to turn off the heat. So the heat's off and this is what it looks like inside. There's about a cup of hydrosol that has been collected now. And I'm just gonna let this cool down on its own. It will continue to, the water will continue to evaporate and condense. Stay in there until everything's nice and cool so that way um, if I were to remove this lid, then um, the hydrosol in there is hot and I don't want that evaporating out. So and keep the lid on just like this. Allow everything to cool down to room temperature. So the pot is no longer hot. I'm going to just remove the lid 
and the hydrosol that I've collected. Hydrosols are typically clear. There's some cases that the hydrosol will be a uh, different color than um, clear. And let's take a look inside here. So there's quite a bit of water left. I just have some cooked mushy apples on the bottom. I was able to collect two cups of hydrosol in a little over two hours of distilling. And I'm going to pour the hydrosol in this mason jar. So I just placed the lid on so there's no contamination in my hydrosol. I'm going to label and date it now. So I've labeled and dated my hydrosol. The apple hydrosol has a really beautiful smell of apple. It's not overpowering. It's not super light. It has a, just a really nice smell. I bought a apple hydrosol in the past from a company and it had barely any scent to it as well so it was definitely worth it to me to make my own and see that making it on my own I can achieve a hydrosol that is beautifully uh, fragranced with um, the scent of apple. So it depends on what plant material you use as to um, the properties that the hydrosol contains. Um, you're going to want to do some research if you want to make your own hydrosols into what plant material you're, you want to use in order to get the um, benefits that you're looking for. Plant material will have its own unique properties, its own unique smell, characteristics, all those things. Um, you can use hydrosols in skincare, you can use them in food, you can drink them. You're going to want to research the effects of any hydrosol that you make so you can see what uh, uses that it has. If you were to use this in skincare, you could put this in a bottle and with a mister and just spray it right on your skin. You can formulate um, hydrosols and use the hydrosol in the water portion of whatever skincare product you're making. I'm going to store this in the refrigerator and this will have a shelf life just as it is of about a year. You can also preserve your hydrosols using a suitable preservative of your choice. And I'll be using this pretty soon in uh, one of my formulations and see how it works with the scent coming out in, um, in the final product. And also I want to see how it works on the skin. I've read and researched that apples have some pretty nice properties as far as their use on skin. So I'm curious to um, try this out in some products that I'm working on and seeing how they turn out. But as you can see, you can make your own hydrosols at home with just simple, basic kitchen equipment. Just make sure that you keep things nice and sterile. You're not contaminating anything. So that way you know that the hydrosol in here is not contaminated to begin with. And you can always um, add a preservative. That's it for this video. Could you please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel? I really appreciate it. Ring the bell to get notifications of my next videos and leave a comment below if you have any questions. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.